Hello and welcome to another episode of Evolve by Erica the Podcast. I am Erica Polsonelli, your host, here to talk about all things health, wellness, 5D, spirituality, meditation, and beyond. I'm so excited that you are here. Come on in. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Evolve by Erica, the podcast. I'm so excited that you're here for another one today. I know so many of you are going to be excited by this guest. I have Tonya here, who is the creator of Rainbow Mushrooms, and you may have seen me take those drops of chaga each morning in my matcha. Well, she is the creator of this brand and this product, and by now I'm sure you've heard a lot about mushrooms. Mushrooms are really trendy right now for so many reasons, and rightfully so. Um, so in this in this episode, we're going to talk all about things Kundalini because there's another little surprise about Tanya that you may not know. Um, we'll talk about Kundalini meditation. <laughs> chaga all the mushrooms what they do for our health and just have a really high vibrational spiritual conversation together so tanya welcome i'm so happy that you are here thank you so much for having me i'm so happy to be here and i'm so excited to have you this. so i've been taking your chaga tincture every single morning with my matcha i had to give up caffeine a while ago because um i suffered from anxiety panic attacks and i completely cut off any caffeine. And then I was recently guided to start in some matcha and chaga. And I have to say, I feel such a difference when I start my day with it. It's as if my brain is very alert and awake. And I, I really feel that just from taking the tincture. Is that something you hear a lot? I'm so, I'm so happy to hear that. Um, I we, we honestly get so many different people having different experiences across the board from, and it just depends on like what, yeah, what the unique individual is experiencing and where they're at with, you know, um, the subtleties or any, any ways that they experience their body. So we hear energy, we hear like, you know, helping people with ADHD or anxiety, um, yeah, we kind of get it all, but I'm so, I'm so excited and happy to hear that. Wow. It's such a positive experience for you. Similarly, I as well had to quit coffee a while ago um, and also have my morning mushroom matchas. And it, it really is. Yeah, it's And so I can supportive. relate to that attentional um, support because in the past I suffered from intentional support and I definitely self-medicated in many ways to get that boost of energy and have my mind turned on and helping me to focus or do tasks that like I really wouldn't do. And it almost mm -hmm. mimics that feeling of what I'm looking for, for that like burst of support in just attentional support really and productivity. I, I really notice a difference and mm -hmm. I'm definitely someone that's like sensitive and very open and aware of the subtleties, but it feels it's very clear to mm -hmm. me. It's, it's very clear and very effective. So thank you. I want you to oh, tell so us a little bit about your journey, how you got mm -hmm. here, how you started to create rainbow, anything that you want to share because there's so much. There is. <laughs> um, okay, cool. I mean, my journey is, it, yeah, I guess it, it really started with, oh, as a teenager and, and having a lot of symptoms and really trying to explore different ways that I could feel better. And so the first way I approached that was through food and really learning about nutrition. So I, I kind of like, yeah, guided myself into that program, into a program around nutritional science. Um, and th that was what I studied and what I was really interested in and it all came from just like trying to understand what could make me feel better and why I couldn't eat the same things that a lot of other people ate and there was also a lot of like as I look back there was so much control built into that as well that I was working through um, and so it kind of started there and over the course of I guess the next few years as I moved through my 20s I was really, I really leaned into, you know, exploring my dharma and finding yoga when I was, I think, 21 was a pretty crucial moment for me where 
yeah, I mean, it was it was the first introduction for me of Eastern modalities and the first introduction to connecting with my soul and my spirit and, you know, my purpose and and really kind of like that tumultuous time of trying to mm-hmm. kind of figure out what you're here to do. And I felt like I had, you know, this mission and I knew I wanted to help people. Um, and so it was kind of, it was, yeah, these like very transformational years of learning more about, you know, what it means to be a highly sensitive person and discovering yeah. that that's really a gift. Um, even though, you know, it, it comes with its hardships at, at times. But, you know, like I, I had an experience in the corporate world that um, was such a m- massive teaching. Like I, I have had an incredible mentor from that experience. And, and it also just helped me grow so much and really see what I don't want. Um, and then over the course of the next few years, I kind of, I've always been very entrepreneurial. Um, I went, I went back to school, um, and studied holistic nutrition and, you know, I, I had done my yoga training and, um, so like, I, I just really dove into so many different, um, modalities and along that, along that journey discovered fungi And that was in 2011 that I first started kind of like learning about them. So it was a while ago. Um, And it was just, it was a curiosity. Like I got to explore mushrooms Mm -hmm. in our forest. And um, it was, you know, like that moment where you're just like, oh, there is more than a button mushroom. And like, like, you know, you're just like, there Mm -hmm. are people that actually study this and devote their lives to it. And um, and they're not just like weird scientists, uh, but they're people that like know the forest and, and know and have such wisdom and are so connected to the land and nature. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it's been one, one massive exploration in, in healing and in coaching a lot of different clients along that journey as well. And just like this deep understanding that we are all so, so unique and our approach to healing is really has to uh, mirror that uniqueness of the individual um and and be so like multifaceted you know and 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 a true holistic approach um so it's been it's been quite the journey but i guess it was around 2017 that i started to really lean into my interest in mushrooms and uh you know i started to experiment with growing mushrooms and reading about the science and just really became enamored with the all of the ways that mushrooms can support humanity in this major shift that we're going through across so many different industries and and that was that was just like this big aha moment and it was just like this massive you know stroke of insight and uh you know I'm someone that has so many ideas I love creating things I, I just like, yeah, that, that is like one of my favorite feelings. I love the beginning of things. Um, and rainbow was just something that felt kind of unstoppable. And like this mission just came right through me. And it's not every idea that I follow through so hardcore on, you know, with, with anybody, the same thing, but this one just had like really took me on a journey and was like, Oh, this is like, this is fully happening. All of the, all of the synchronicities to make this um, possible are really aligning. And so it was really cool to come into that. You know, I've never actually been in that massive amount of a flow state. Um, And so that was really like Mm -hmm. affirming. Um, It's almost sometimes it feels like it's not you actually doing the work, like you're getting pulled towards it and like lining up. And of course you're doing so much work, but to me at least it, when I'm in that flow state, it doesn't feel hard. It just feels like what needs to happen mm-hmm. and it. And then you just go and yes. you go and you flow and yeah. you flow and it comes to Absolutely. And like, I think it's, um, you know, something that I try to practice so much is uh, like coming into the space of realizing that we are, you know, and I don't mean this in like a spiritual woo way at all, but just like, you know, being in this state of co-creation where 
we are yeah. not the ones doing everything and not the ones that need to figure it all out because what's happening is happening and it's flowing through us and with us and for us. Um, and it makes it less like, you know, you just feel less resistance. You get less emotionally and personally attached, um, which is often where all the anxieties and um, personal attachments come into outcomes and expectations and ego and all these things, which we're all dealing with on a constant basis. But I like to remind myself of that in the moments where it gets sticky because the beginning of things is always incredible. It's always really fun and, and often can feel incredible. And, you know, we're like three years in now. And so there are hardships. There are like a lot of, um, a lot of moments where I'm so passionate about it, but it doesn't mean there aren't challenges. There absolutely are. Um, and, and so it's just, yeah, meeting totally. those ebbs and flows, yeah. you know? It's so interesting because I'm about three years into my business as well, which is funny that we're kind of on a similar line. Yeah. Oh, cool. And it, it's so true. Like in the beginning, you have this like rush and this flow supporting you to get it out there because it has to for the collective. And then you go through these phases mm -hmm. of like, okay, like things are, things are more quiet right now. And I'm just like allowing that to be. I feel like when yeah. we're so connected to that divine source, like I always tell my husband knows when I'm in flow because it literally like I act different. I look different. My energy level is different. I, I always say, I feel like I'm like literally plugged in, like the universe is plugged <laughs> <laughs> into my physical it is helping me to flow. Yeah. And then in those times, like you said, there's ebbs and flows where it's time there, there are moments to just be and to just to allow a reading to move the way mm -hmm. it is without producing, without creating, without, without all of that momentum. And it's so interesting to go through the stages and learn how to find the beauty in all of them because being content mm -hmm. is so important. And I think we live in a society that would say like, you know, I feel like there's a big push against being content, but like finding that space to be content for time and bask in the blessings that that first push has brought you and then wait for the inspiration um, and detach from the ego and just continue to stay open and inspired because that next rush will come through when it's divine time, when our frequency matches mm -hmm. whatever that next creation is yeah exactly and and when it's that's it's totally right and like instead of feeling like you have to like grind and push through something that might be challenging it's just kind of sitting back and 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 also like whatever that brings up whether it's like fear I've been like really diving into um just like juicy work around my shadow and like going back into those like, you know, childhood wounds and being like, Oh, this is good. Like we're never really done. And even when you think, even when you think you are, there'll be yeah, whatever, whatever it is that's happening in life. Like it's, um, it, there's just ebbs and flows. And for me, it's, it's all mirrored in so many ways and reflected in so many ways in business and personal life and in all of these things. And so, um, it's, uh, yeah. So true. Yeah. Was there like one story or one experience that you heard from someone about mushrooms or something that like really inspired you? Was there like one moment that you could kind of boil all this down to that really just like lit that fire within you or opened you up? Totally. I mean, I, so when I think back to the 2011 moment, it was listening to, um, listening to, I was like at, at this event and there was a speaker who was giving a presentation on like some really like cool fringy health things for, for 2011. Um, and that was the first time I'd ever heard anybody speak about mushrooms like in a in a way in any way because <laughs> it was just like oh it's a food source and they're in the forest um I didn't know an anything beyond that and so that was like this little and he, actually he was speaking about chaga and going on about 
the black pigmentation and how health promoting um, that pigment was to our bodies and the role of antioxidants and various things like this. And, and I, something just lit up inside of me. It was like this little, you know, breadcrumb that I'll never forget. I remember the moment so perfectly. And I have this note in my phone from 2011 scribbled down, like all of these notes I took from, from this, um, from this like seminar. And so that was the first moment and I was lucky enough to have him teach and, and he became a mentor. And so he would take us, you know, on like excursions in, in the forest up north in Ontario. And I got to like really be, I remember just being truly like amazed at the amount of knowledge he had about the forest. And it was again, like just coming into a deep state of awareness and understanding of uh, the role of, of nature and our ability to, to feel more connected to that um, and, and how healing that can be. And so that was, that was a pretty key moment for me and, and on this journey was, was um, it's very inspiring to hear you know, somebody like just, just learn new knowledge where you're just like, you feel your, your mind being blown and opened. And, um, you know, there's few moments I feel, um, there's a lot of moments in life, I suppose, where that happens. If we're like listening and willing to learn, you know, learning about Kundalini yoga and having that experience was another like really similar, um, moment for me where, you know, more experiential um but a really really big moment for me yeah, so well. tell us about that so i know before you said you were like on the quest for your dharma you found yoga and then it kind of was searching for dharma mm-hmm. found yoga did training or so it sounds and then really led to your dharma yeah. so tell us what led you to teacher training and what are you trained in tell us a little bit about that totally so I actually, I actually initially found yoga when I was in my corporate job and I was so stressed and uncomfortable in my skin and there was pain and like, you know, so much, so many digestive conditions in, and so that was, that kind of led me there and, um, it was such a, like so much change was happening. And so yoga was just this perfect space that I would go to every single day after work and like cry on the mat if I needed to just really start to explore and embody myself. So I started kind of in a, in a Hatha based practice and I really got into it and I did it every day and, you know, was flexible, but I was actually injuring myself. Um, and so over the next few years I did develop some injuries and, Um, you know, it was nothing, it was nothing super, super major, but I kind of just came to this point. I did my Hatha teacher training and I came to this point where I don't want to say I was bored of my physical body, but I was just feeling called for a spiritual practice. And I wasn't really sure what that meant, but I knew that in my Hatha yoga practice, I felt like there was more. And so... I I moved to LA for a little bit in 2016 and I hadn't, I'd maybe heard of Kundalini yoga, but I hadn't, I had no experience with it. And I moved to LA. It was my first day there. I got, you know, really lonely, uh, even though I, you know, I had, I had some friends there, but for the most part I was embarking on this journey and I pulled up Google Maps and was like, okay, you're going to go to Whole Foods, get some grocery, go to a familiar place. And I saw this place on the map called Rama Yogic Institute for, you know, applied science or something. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to go like walk over there. Um, I like yoga and I'll go check it out. And so I walked into my first Kundalini yoga class and it was just like instant, oh my God, like, yeah whoa and I didn't really know what I was walking into but I was really pulled energetically pulled to go there and there was like somebody who fainted in the first class (laughs) and it was crazy um and we were you know just it's like (laughs) 
<laughs> it was wow. so unusual. And I love that. I love, love, love like how it really just gets you out of your habitual patterns of like movements. And you're like, what is this? This like people must think we're insane. Um, and and, and I, I mean, I had like a full blown transcendental, you know, I started going quite often. And after a few classes, I had like, you know, one of the most powerful transcendental experiences I've ever had um, with one of my teachers and was in the moment, like, it sounds like, oh, cool. I'm like, I want that. But in the moment, you're like kind of scared and you're like, what is happening? Um, and it was uncomfortable, but then it turned into like this, you know, incredible state of yeah. bliss. Um, and I mean, the, the results were just so profound uh, that I couldn't stop. And it really just started to accelerate me on my path in my dharma and my connection to myself and to others and to, you know, developing a deeper sense of compassion for what we're all going through and of this experience and human experience that we that we are in and that is such a major shift to be able to you know like learn these these principles that have been set out by you know sages and yogis and you, you know, experience these teachings that were secret literally for yeah. so long. And, and so I, I've, yeah, it's been, it's been a few years now of my practice. And so I, I did do my training last year in, in Kundalini yoga. Um, and right now I'm teaching my team. So we have our, we have bi-monthly new moon and full moon classes. And I, I teach like friends and some of, at some of my friends studios, um, and it's definitely a practice that I that I commit to Beautiful. daily. So you have one kriya or meditation that just stands out to you that helps so much in your transformation. Mm. I, yeah, I mean, the one that really, you know, the Mahan Which Tantra. One is that? It's it's like a. Maybe, I think that's the name of it, but it's um it's like a call and repeat for Satya Oh yes, Nama. yes, yes, I do. Yeah, so that's one of my that's one of my absolute favorites to practice yeah. in a group. Um, and then I mean, I've yeah, I've been experimenting with lots of forty day practices, but um, I love Sudarshan Chakra Kriya. Oh, I love, um, I love my Prosperity Kriyas. I do those typically yeah. on the daily. And those are so, so impactful and powerful. Oh, yeah. um, Kirtan Kriya is a favorite. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What about you? Any, right any now, favorites? I'm loving the Trinity breath for intuition. I'm going to teach that mm. for my digital, my online community for next month. We do a new meditation each month, a new Kundalini one each month. So that one is what I'm just loving. And I feel like the psychic hits and the telepathic communications at an all time high after committing to that one. Um, love ending with mm. morning call. That's just like chef's kiss. Mm. Like it's just yeah. so blissful and beautiful. And mm. I love incorporating cat cow every day, breath of fire, ego eradicator when I can. Um, they're just, Same. that's like my go-to right now. Yeah. Yeah, I was into the intelligence meditation for a while, and I found that to be so incredible, yeah, too. It is. It's really powerful. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So I love that we were, you know, guided to one another and aligned, and then hearing that you created this amazing brand, and you're also aligned to Kundalini. It was just, like, so incredible and exciting to hear. So I want you to tell us a little bit about your products and what they offer. I know you touched upon it a little bit, um, but like maybe 
uh, each of your products if you want to, or just like your best sellers, your go-tos, and just tell us the benefits of each one so that I believe in so much. Like before we hopped on and started recording, Tanya was telling me how like the antioxidants in chaga is just incredible and like anti-aging um, comes with chaga. And for me, every time I put chaga in my matcha, I'm like thinking about energy, but now I want to set that intention over it as like antioxidants and aging gracefully because I believe in our intention is just so freaking powerful. And when we put our mind to that and that intention over whatever it is we're consuming, it will just multiply. So tell us a little bit so everyone listening, if they yes. get your products, they could do the same. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we can start with chaga. Um, I mean, yeah, there are so few foods on this planet that are, that are like, you know, have that dark black pigmentation. Um, and so this is, it's such a cool, you know, every, every food, if you, if you think about like, you know, the food sources, every color corresponds to a different set of uh, nutrients, compounds, and so the the black pigmentation of of chaga is is a really interesting one, and it's known as this king of medicinal mushrooms um, and this powerhouse of you know it's it's often compared to just having you know this auric scale, um, which is an antioxidant scale which measures certain foods against one another, and chagas is just through the roof, and so you know from an Eastern perspective, which is a lot of where our traditional knowledge of these mushrooms comes from, um, is, you know, ancient China. And, uh, you know, that was where, you know, these mushrooms were really revered and respected and, um, you know, looked at in, in such a beautiful way that we're starting to just kind of see, um, happen in the western world but it's been you know long, a long time mycophilic my mushroom loving fungi loving country and so we we've you know i love learning about the different types of like words and vernacular that they have to describe these mushrooms um so chaga is this mushroom of of great potency and we often see people using it for you know, it, it's an inc it's incredible for immunity and for the immune system and acting as an immunomodulator, which just means that it can bring the mush or the, it can bring the immune system up to up or down based on the individual person's needs. Um, and so, chaga has this beautiful ability to protect our DNA, to support our heart and bodily systems, and on a cellular level. Um, yeah, acting to neutralize some of the free radicals that we're just exposed to um, that happen as we age. And so that's kind of this like powerhouse mushroom. You can, you know, we, we, we do a dual extract for our tinctures and that just means that we're extracting um, via water and alcohol. And that means that you're getting the water soluble compounds and the fat soluble compounds. And chaga is one that you always want to have a dual extract of because it's going to be the most potent. And there's compounds that, you know, you can get from the water that you can't get from alcohol and vice versa. So both are very important. So, yeah, I'm so glad that you're that you're loving chaga. Um, yeah, oh it God. is. It's, right, it's a powerhouse. I'll make myself another latte with chaga. <laughs> no, I want one too now. Um <laughs> And then there's Rishi is one of my favorite mushrooms, which is kind of this, it's, you know, she's known as the queen of medicinal mushrooms. And this is a mushroom that, um, you know, it, you know, in Eastern tradition is, is regarded as this mushroom of spiritual potency. And this is, a, you know, a known adaptogen, which is basically herbs, plants, fungi that uh, are very safe to use and that help the body and help a specific stress axis known as the HPA axis uh, basically balance and helps us adapt uh, to stressful environments, which of course are all around us in every, in every direction, in every way. Um, and so that's one of my favorite mushrooms, which is you can use it for its calming effects. Um, it's just amazing for like, you know, I, I used it when I was doing, when I had 
you know, a big healing with mushrooms in 2016, I was taking Rishi therapeutically. And that was really like the moment where I had just such a profound experience with these mushrooms that set me out to really explore them in a much more deep way. Um, so Rishi is incredible. We have lion's mane. Lion's mane is our best seller right now. People are loving this mushroom. This is a mushroom for brain health and supports cognitive enhancement. So memory, focus, concentration, uh, and has really cool compounds in it that are being studied to support Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease. So kind of like long-term neurodegenerative conditions that, um, Lion's mane has shown to have these nerve growth factors that can actually promote the growth of nerves in the brain. And then there's cordyceps, which is um, kind of often often referred to as this energy mushroom. So this is another adaptogen. So I, I really love, if you're in a stressful period, I love combining reishi and cordyceps together to support the adrenals, to provide nourishment to the adrenals. Um, and Cordyceps is more of this like energy endurance mushroom that can support uh, the mitochondrial energy. So it can be referred to as this like libido stimulating mushroom, but you know, from a science, I guess from a science perspective, we don't have super amounts of research that show that. But Eastern studies do show that it does support this vigor of the body, and I just believe that if you're if you're supporting overall energy you're going to have more energy in the system you're going to have more fire in the system you're going to feel libido and you know that that energy is all very very connected um but yeah we, we are you know our team loves using um and we have a, actually a lot of like athletes dancers ballerinas that take cordyceps for like pre-workout after workout to support with their um with their endurance Mm -hmm. turkey tail is another amazing this is like known as you know this immune mushroom and all mushrooms support the immune system through their you know content of beta glucans that are very supportive to the human body we have receptors for these beta glucans in our gut um, but turkey tail is a really incredible mushroom and is very very much uh regarded in scientific communities as well and um you know doctors are often prescribed you know not prescribing but offering this mushroom as like an adjunctive therapy for cancer patients who need additional natural support mm -hmm. and so turkey tail is incredible for the immune system also supports the gut um with some prebiotic you know um prebiotic support and then we have 1111, which is our blend of 11 mushrooms. And that 1111 is actually the first product that I launched with. We just launched with one. And it's kind of our, our synergy blend, which, which kind of provides whole body resilience, immune resilience. We get people saying it supports their energy. And I've been taking it for, yeah, almost four years which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, but, you know, I, it's been so incredible. Um, just compare, comparing how much I used to get sick yeah. to what my, like what that looks like for me now post, uh, yeah, post, you know, starting my mushroom journey and really like experimenting with, with like rainbows mushrooms. So that is 11.11 also one of our best sellers and a really great place for people to start if they are mushroom curious or don't really know where to start. I always like to bring it back to, you know, in helping people just have more body awareness and think about where do I need support on my health journey? What's happening in my life right now? Which mushroom might support that? Um, and then of course, I, I, you know, I really believe that our health should be, you know, really multifaceted. And so we always like to try and support all of our habits with, with, you know, whether it's meditation. And like you said, I mean, the power of our mind and our intentions are so, so important. And I was really excited to make tincture products specifically in a liquid format because I wanted to tie that to 
a ritual that people loved, like their morning beverage, like their tonic or their tea or their coffee or their matcha or their water, and to really start to have people waking up excited to take care of themselves, excited for a morning ritual with mushrooms, nourishing themselves, setting an intention um, simultaneously. And um, yeah, we, we have a couple other products too. We have forest juice, which is mushrooms infused mm-hmm. with maple syrup infused with mushrooms it's so delicious delicious you just reminded me i have to post a reel with i have the content for it i made chocolate chip banana pancakes oh my gosh and there's like five ingredients are really healthy and i use that maple syrup it was amazing it was so yum please do i can't wait to see it definitely we'll share that soon yeah it was so good i loved that i really enjoyed it Yeah. So what's your role right now in your company? Like day to day, what are some things that you're doing for Rainbow? Hmm. Yes. Well, um, we're a really small, (laughs) (laughs) we're a really small team. So, um, I mean, my role is, I mean, honestly, I do, I do a little bit of everything, which is kind of, yeah, pretty, pretty typical, um, of founders, founder CEOs and small businesses. So my days can look a little different for sure. Um, but it's, it's honestly everything from, you know, helping to manage our production to R and D and working on our new products. Um, you know, chatting with people, connecting with the community, doing our Instagram, creating content, doing our legal stuff, doing our financial stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm in the process of launching our podcast, which I'm so excited about. Yeah, I'm very excited. So we'll, we'll be having lots of conversations, more conversations around, around fungi and um, ways in which that's supported people on their journeys. So I'm really looking forward to that. And that kind of gives me, I love, I love one-on-one chatting and um, yeah, natural conversations as well. So I'm very, very much looking forward to that. I mean, yeah, we have updates to our branding that we're doing. Um, So it really is like across the board, just so many things. We have events that we're starting to plan for the fall. Um, Yeah. Amazing. And what about the mushrooms themselves? Like who, who do you have doing that? Where do you source them? What does that process look like? Yeah. So our, all of our mushrooms are sourced from Canada. Uh, so we have a grower that is based in Quebec and we have like a network of sustainable foragers. So we, we're not like most of our most of our fruiting body mushrooms are all cultivated, which is kind of the most sustainable way to, you know, have a mushroom business. Mm. And then we are wild sourcing our chaga and some of our turkey tail from Canadian forests. And that's all done super sustainably, not ever um, endangering the tree or taking, you know, more of the chaga than we need to, because that's always a concern with some, some foragers that maybe just don't, don't know are like yanking this entire massive conch off of a tree and that actually leaves the tree uh, susceptible to illnesses and to disease so there's definitely sustainable ways to forage um, that are really important to us so we yeah that's kind of like it's all coming from Canada right now which is which especially when we launched I mean we were we were, were we're really we're really, you know, passionate and, um, championing that. Um, cause a lot of, a lot of mushroom brands are sourced from overseas and, and yeah, that was just like, I really wanted to have a, a like a personal relationship with, with our growers and that's what I've achieved. And it's really meaningful to me to be able to know that like we can play music to our mushrooms. Yeah. We can, you know, like our, yeah, it, there's a lot of like just really beautiful, beautiful things that we do um, that are shared passions and, um, you know, pieces of intention that we put into growing the mushrooms. So beautiful. Where did you come up with the name Rainbow? Um, it was a really fun 
exercise, branding exercise with one of my best friends who, who does this. And she was like really, really supportive of, uh, you know, me creating this and wanted to support that. And we basically spent a night together brainstorming and she just like facilitated this process for me to get everything out and to like say things. And, um, and it was really collaborative. We just went back and forth for a while. I have this piece of paper still. Wow. It was a big brainstorm session. And like the last thing I said was rainbow. And we looked at the paper the next day and we were like, oh, well, that's what it is. I love it. I love that. I remember yeah. when I was in teacher training. One of the teachers that came in one day, sometimes they had like guest Kundalini teachers come in and teach us, which was so nice. I always enjoyed those days. And one of the, the men who were, who was leading us, he said like, when you enter this space of practice and of that frequency, you start to live life in technicolor. And it just like stuck with me. Like it's so true. And then from there, I feel like, I mean, you know what it feels like to like look and just see nature in such a different way than you ever have before and mm -hmm. see the beauty of the colors and all that like this earth has to offer us. And I love that rainbow kind of connects to like living life in that spectrum of all different colors and tapping into those beautiful, beautiful frequencies that nature offers. I love it. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Sometimes it's like you look at... Well, there's just, yeah, I mean, I was on a forest walk the other week and it's just, it's so beautiful to see the way that nature is, like a forest is chaotic. There are branches everywhere and like, it's, it's like beautiful chaos. You know what I mean? And there's, it is, it is perfect in, in the way that it's just, it is what it is. And so you know, it's just, it's kind of like a stark contrast to the way that we try to organize things and make things neat and have, you know, like be structural and straight lines. And like, there are no straight lines in nature, like rarely. I mean, even, even a tree trunk is, if you get close enough, is completely like curved and has divots and, and whatnot. And it was just this moment of being like, you know, there is no such thing as perfect or, or straight lines or, you know, having things be organized in a linear fashion and just realizing that, you know, there's just such sacredness and, ge and, and geometry in its own ways. Like when you look at a succulent and you're like, this is like a mandala. This is crazy. <laughs> it really is. It's so yeah, true. it is. It's so true. And it's so true about nature as well and how we've been conditioned that we need to be or how we need to live and when we could just be more like nature and just flow gracefully as our authentic selves beautiful beautiful things happen mm -hmm. yeah well thank you so much for sharing all of this i'm so grateful that thank you so much for having me and i'm grateful for the products that you share with us and i'm grateful that i start my day every day with you <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm I'm so grateful. Thank you for sharing this with your community. Um, and yeah, always always a pleasure. I love speaking with other yogis. Yes, I know. I know. It's always so nice to connect. I was thinking right before I came on here, like how wonderful that I could spend my afternoon talking to someone who just like speaks my language and who could teach <laughs> so much about um, mushrooms and all the medicinal aspects and benefits that we can get from them. So I'm very grateful. Thank you. So where can everyone find you? Where can they find your amazing tinctures? Yes. So um, we, we're at rainbow, R-A-I-N-B-O, no W, rainbow.com and .ca. Um, and we're on Instagram at rainbow mushrooms. And you can find me at Tanya Papanikolov, which is a mouthful. Um, but we can, I'm sure, add them to the to the show notes or something. Absolutely. I'll put them all in there for the yeah. listeners. And I hope you guys, if you're guided to start implementing mushrooms into your life, I, I hope that you um, reach out 
and check out her products. I actually love this. Is what I wanted to share before. I love the taste of chaga. Like I, I actually mm. just enjoy the taste of it in my matcha. It's delicious. So it tastes good. It's good for you. So great. Earthy, mushroomy. I love. I love it. I love to hear it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, and thank you to everyone who's. Thank you. Please check Tanya and her rainbow mushrooms out, and we'll end as we always do with the long time sun. May the long time sun shine upon you. Upon you. Love surround. Love you. surround you. May the pure light within you, within you, guide, guide your way on. Satnam. Mm, Satnam.